All right, before the video begins, I just want to announce you that my scenes are up for sale. So if you want to get your hands on one of these amazing and beautiful babies, you can do so. Uh, just go to the link in the description. There is my new online store is open and you can purchase and I will personally put these scenes in their envelopes and send them your way. All right, that's it. Uh, I announced what I had to announce. Let's go with the video. Hello, anything at here. I realize I never explained something that is kind of vital. So the Instamatic camera uses uh, 126 film, which is, it's similar to 120 film, but in the size of a 35 millimeter film. That means is it's basically the same size as regular 35 millimeter film, but it has a backing paper and they no longer sell it and it's a hassle to find one. So you can, there's two methods for making this happen. You can buy an old cartridge of 126 and just try to make it happen on the cartridge and use the backing paper and whatnot. I saw the results and, and the whole process and it seems kind of convoluted. So what I did was I bought this cartridge uh, from a website and I'm gonna leave the link in the description. I just purchased this and this is what I'm using. So. What I'm gonna teach you on this video has to do with using this cartridge, all right? So, yeah, that's, that's it. So let's imagine we're in a dark bag right now and I have my cartridge, I have some tape, I have my film and my scissor. And we're gonna need all these elements to make it happen. First things first, we need to open the cassette Bear in mind that the spool has this part and this part is the one that needs to be up because this will be connected with the camera. Keep in mind that this needs to go inside the cartridge so this part will go up here and we will close it. And the large part will have the flat side. Why? Because when we put it inside the camera it will go like so. So the flat part goes down, right? Okay, now we can open it and prepare it. The emulsion needs to go on this side. What that means is that this will be the side in which the film will be placed. So we just need to connect these two elements like so. In order to do that we will use tape. Now I'm using this tape just for demonstration purposes but I usually use electrical tape so I just thought this will be easier to see on camera. So we take a little piece of tape and cut it and we place it in the way in which we think it needs to go like so place it there and we secure it now this is secured we should be good to go now we don't need to roll it over here that's not how it works we need to roll it on this side so we're gonna just extend this and cut let's imagine we have like this you, can, you don't need to do this with a full roll of film, you can do this with a simple, you can grab a cartridge and just cut it. But the thing we're gonna do now is very important. Now you will fold this like so into a tiny little roll of film and then do it like this. You will not touch the emulsion side, just do it like so and compress the roll. And you compress the roll and compress the roll And now that you have it, you're at the beginning. And now that you're at the beginning, you can place it inside the cartridge. So, just like we saw the first time, place it like there. And all this huge stack of film needs to go loose inside of the chamber. And now you place it. You see if it's working. Yeah, it should be working. You move it a little bit. Close it and now you can place it inside the camera. Just open your camera and you're good to go. One thing that's important, and I always do this to my cameras, it's a good idea to place electrical tape all around here. Why? Because this has a window. You can see the roll of film inside. If I place something in here, you will be able to see it, right? And you don't want that because light can enter. So in order to avoid that, you will place electrical tape all around here and all around here. So seal all the edges from which light might enter over here, here on the sides and then you can use the camera to take some pictures. You will notice that this will advance when you take a picture. 
but it's not exact. Sometimes it advances in an irregular way. So sometimes it moves more, sometimes it moves less. It's highly irregular. So what I do whenever I take one picture, for example, I take one image right now, and I like it, and then in order to have a consistent spreading, I just cover the entrance, take an image, and then now I take another one. Sure, I waste a little bit of film, but that way I make sure that I don't have frames that are superimposed one on top of each other. And uh, yeah, and if I need to scan, it's way easier to scan that way because the images are not crammed together. One thing that's important to notice is that it doesn't matter um, how much you keep advancing, there's no way of telling when the roll is over because this will keep spinning and spinning and spinning. Try to experiment and see how many rolls you get, how many shots you get per roll, but um, yeah, once you're done, put this in a dark bag. So let's imagine we're in a dark, uh, dark bag right now. Open the bag and you will notice that, I mean, if you try to touch here, there's no film in here, right? The film is no longer over here. The film is all the way up here. So you just open this again in a dark bag. Do not do this at broad daylight. You open this and your film will be here. And from here on, you simply plug it inside a reel and you start loading the reel and as usual any kind of reel will work and then you will have the last bit just remove it take out the tape and develop as normal and that's all there is to know about loading and unloading your film from the instamatic 133x or any instamatic camera hello i am in prospect park and I'm gonna be shooting an episode here. I already tried this camera, already tested it, and it works fine. Uh, I tested it with some Vision 3500T, which as you know, it's one of my favorite films, and um, it worked fine. So I'm gonna test it now with some other film and just take some pictures around here. One thing that I discovered is that the shutter speed of this camera, it's quite slow, so it's not a fast-paced action, like I can go around and blah, snap pictures. Like I came to the park to take pictures of trees and nature and textures and see how good the lens actually is. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be great, but also how fun it is to shoot. So I don't have to think much about this. I only have two options, shade and uh, daylight <laughs> or tungsten and daylight. And I'm gonna be shooting around the park, uh, things that I find interesting. And then I'll give you my review about this. Okay, the sun is pretty strong. Um, follow me on this adventure. One of the not so good things about this camera is that the lens is quite narrow, so I can't take a picture of the whole boathouse. I only capture like half of it. Let's see if I can make it happen. I really like these trees. Maybe I can take a picture of this in some kind of weird fashion, like take one picture and then not advance it properly and see how it looks. I'm gonna give it a try. So this is a nice place. I'm gonna take a picture of this and see how it looks. This contrast is interesting too. Even the film and camera has a problem with that much difference between light and shadow. So maybe this camera will do too? It might work. Let's see. There's a patch of light over here, which might be interesting. And I'm gonna try to capture somebody passing through that. I'm gonna shoot at full um, sun and see how much of the image is dark and how much of the image is, you know, correctly exposed. By the way, there are some turtles over here. 
I love turtles. Look at that. I want to take it on a picture of the turtle. The building looks super nice, like emerging between the trees. Let's see. I want to see how much flare can this camera stand. There's something weird about using a camera which you can't measure light or do anything and it's just a black box in which you press a button. I don't know. It's liberating and at the same time terrifying, especially because I have no clue what I'm doing. I just point and shoot and literally point and shoot and I can't measure anything. So I guess it's part of the adventure. If you're into this, like it has a Lomo feel for sure. Like it gives you this idea of you can just go out and shoot and not worry about the results which is partially true, but at the same time you're taking pictures with film so you're expecting some kind of result. I don't know how amazing these pictures will be, especially because the lens is not great, but I guess at the same time that's the kind of vibe you're looking for when you try this. I don't know, let's see. And so the question you've probably been wondering, is it worth it, like all that effort, buying a cartridge, loading in the dark, and then unloading in the dark and taking some pictures, is it worth it? Is the result worth it? Well, I mean, it's the classical response and I'm sorry about this, but it depends. It depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for super sharp quality, amazing images and whatnot, then of course not. This is not a great solution. This, in modern terms, you can think of this as a webcam. <laughs> That's the most realistic expectation you can have. It doesn't look great at all. But the fact that it doesn't look great adds a certain character to it. Like if you're gonna shoot some kind of, I don't know, slide film and cross-process it and then shoot it on this, it might give it a little bit of, you know, a different vibe. I shot um, color film and I shot movie film, uh, Vision 3400T, uh, through this camera just to give some test shots and see how I like it. And it's, it's fine, it's not something I would do every day at all. And it's also not something that I will bring, you know, if I want to have some kind of amazing memory and remember forever this moment in which I'm going to be always thankful to experience and use this camera. Not really. I mean, the shutter speed is too low and if you want to capture something, it's not a great tool. Um, you probably need a flash, but then getting a flash for these things, it's kind of really expensive or convoluted. I don't know, I wouldn't go for that. I think this is a cool camera if you want to experiment, have fun and just try something with your friends, you know? Or if you want to go for a live lo-fi kind of vibe and, and you want to have some kind of portrait session with extremely lo-fi uh, quality, then this can also work. As I said, imagine this camera is like a webcam and your other film cameras which have professional lenses and you know, better bodies or whatever have you, those will be like your main digital cameras from nowadays. You know, they'll give you amazing results. Um, but there's something interesting about trying a camera that has so many limitations and it's so uncontrollable that you're basically just wishing for the best while you're using it. Like it only has two settings and it could have just one, like being between both and you won't probably notice. It's, it's a camera that people, when they see you with this camera, they don't feel like you're doing anything serious because it doesn't look like a serious camera. It looks like a grandma camera. It looks like a camera that you just pick up from a, you know, from a shop, like a secondhand shop, and it was just lying in a basket and you just put it here and try to take some pictures. And you will probably get one or two good images per roll. In fact, all the shots that I took with this camera, I can take them with any other camera. Like it, the, the depth of field is just enormous. And for me, that I shoot wide open as much as I can, this is a very different take. It's, yeah, it's a bad quality, it's lo-fi, but there's an appeal to it. 
and if that appeals to you then you should go and give it a try if you don't have a ton of film at your disposal and you're just struggling to get some film or you're not developing it yourself and you're sending it for development and whatnot then this is not the way to go because this is more or less for do-it-yourself kind of photography you probably will not be amazed by the results but you can experiment and find really interesting things like the collage things you can make that's interesting if you're thinking if, if you can think outside the box if you can think artistically you could come up with a lot of solutions or interesting perspectives you can take pictures of the same object from many different perspectives and they can connect a little bit because the spacing is not even so sometimes the images will be like this or sometimes like this so you can just have fun and try stuff and there are very few cameras that allow you that level of experimentation and kind of lack of certainty or lack of control like they give you certain control like you know when you're gonna press the shutter and the the setting you're gonna use like one of your two amazing settings uh, but there's a there's a, there's a there's an interesting mix of experimentation and lack of control and at the same time knowing what you're doing that can be interesting like if you use this camera it might surprise you if you're if you have the right um, the right mental attitude towards the camera that's all I gotta say I hope you enjoyed this episode and yeah thank you so much for waiting I'm sorry this episode took forever to shoot but I'm in the middle of stuff it's been in a very intense few weeks and just experimenting and shooting film for an episode takes a long time so I hope you enjoy this episode thank you so, so much for being here big shout out to my patrons because they were the ones who told me to try this camera and give my impressions and make a review of it and yeah it just sent me into an interesting spiral of trying to figure out how to make this review happen and purchasing the the, 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 the cassette uh, and then just trying it myself and experimenting and see if it worked or not blah 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 so it's been a journey and I just want to thank my patrons for the support during this journey because they were the ones who asked me to go on this journey and they supported me on the way so thank you so so much and yeah that's pretty much it I'll see you extremely soon thank you so much for sticking by and yeah bye bye Thank you.